How's every single one of you? Welcome to the Extreme Rules 2022 review. Pay-per-view that left us with a great taste of mouth. We received what we were promised. You know, a lot of people like were expectations and everything about what could happen in this show. But I feel that like the whole time it was actually good matches, good storytelling, maybe a little bit of, you know, in most stuff that like, we were actually correct with the beauty of previous and predictions. And in the end, we got, you know, a big return. So we're happy about that. Yeah, you know, the wrestling world is a buzz right now. It's official. He's back. We Bray Wyatt, <clears throat> excuse me, Bray Wyatt. He's here. You know, fantastic end to the show, Extreme Rules. And the crowd was into it. You know, not obviously Bray Wyatt. We'll talk about that when we get there. You know, but just, you know, off the bat, because everybody knows everybody's talking about it. He's back. The crowd was hot for that. They were hot for the whole show. They loved it. For the most part, I loved it, and I think, you know, maybe every Monday Night Raw or NXT or SmackDown, you know, they might not all be home runs, but so far, every big show, SummerSlam, now Extreme Rules at Triple H has, I think he's moving the company forward, yes. you know, and, and, you know, progressing things in, in a good way, you know, with with each big show, pay-per-view, I'm not calling them premium live events, that's bullshit, but, no, you, no, know, no, pay -per -views, no. you know, pay-per-views, you know, but oh, I mean, yeah, sure. this was yeah. good, and you know, hey, the crowd was into it. I would have loved to uh, maybe to have been there if circumstances were maybe a little different. But, you know, Philadelphia, they always deliver with the crowd and they were great tonight. And I think it added to the show. Absolutely. So, family, thank you again for being with us. You know, we did the Bound for Glory video. Thank you for the support on that. Thank you for previous and predictions, you know, like talking about everything. And like I said, we were pretty much right on every single outcome. So there you go. You know, Paul and I, we yeah, get a 10 close. out of 10. Yeah, and we did pretty good. So, you know, like the first match that opened this show was like the six man tag. You know, the, you know, Seamus and his group going against Imperium. You know, like this was like the continuation, like the follow up of what happened yesterday on SmackDown for the Intercontinental Championship. Paul here, we mentioned that like Seamus needed to win to what uh, to prolong this, to keep going with this. And very great match. And I will tell you that spot that I love the most is when like Gunter tried to do the same thing as yesterday with the Shillelagh. Seamus this time kicked out. Yeah, you know, he uh, he had the uh, kind of had it, a, a real long one and he put it at his arm and he did a big clothesline and he hit that and Sheamus kicked out. And like you said, I mean, early on, they took Sheamus out of this thing and then he came back and, you know, um, it, it was they, they told a great story here. You know, the guys were they felt energized. They felt like everybody involved. Yes. They, they felt like, you know, this meant something and the crowd was into it. They, you know, they were chanting, they were cheering. For, when Sheamus made the comeback, the crowd went insane. Yes. Chanting Sheamus. And, and that wasn't audio sweetened in from Kevin Dunn because everybody, you could read their lips. They were chanting. Not anymore. Going for Sheamus. And, you know, this is good because, this, hey, this guy's over. You have a little something in him. And it shows well, why is he over? Because he's involved with someone who's credible and a legitimate feud. That's all it takes. And Paul, you that, know, you that can see like, like the marks right here from like, you know, like the chops. Oh, and yeah. The... I mean, well, they just had that grueling match yesterday. Commentary even said it like Jesus, you know, his chest was turned into hamburger meat not even 24 hours ago. Now here we are again. Exactly. And, you know, I mean, great match. Uh, you know, Gunter, he gets our Walter. He gets taken out uh, through the announce table. The big uh, like uh, what, what does he call it? The crucifix bomb. Oh yeah, you know, like uh, yeah, the crucifix bomb, or like the, raz then, uh, the razor edge, or like yeah, the, the Celtic, razor's the edge, and then they pin. Uh, there you go. See, we know the spots, we know the moves here. Yeah, and yeah, then they know. pin. Uh, I think they pin. Who was it? Was it Giovanni? Uh, yeah. yeah, Giovanni. They pin yep. him, and I mean, this was great. The brawling brutes, they needed to win because Sheamus lost yesterday. Okay, this continues the feud. Commentary even said the same thing I said. Walter says the ring is sacred, and you know, then why did he use, you know, have to use a weapon to cheat, blah, blah, blah. This and that is continues the feud. So, I mean, this is good. And you even see Pete Dunn and Ridge Holland after the match, they don't look like so. Like when Pete Dunn had the little cap on and the bullshit outfit, he looked like so. Butch. Now, <laughs> now he looks legit. He looks energized. He looks, you know, he looks like, like the way that, like, the, yeah, you know, the, like something what was I, the name? You know, like happy the, to be the, here. Brutal, like the, the Broods, like, what was the name of Pete Dunn, you know, on NXT, you know, when he was like... Oh, the, the bruiser weight. The bruiser weight, yeah, like, you know, he looks that kind of a guy, you know, like, if, if you guys want to see, like, what we're talking about, look at the guy, you know, right here on, on to my left. Right, there you go. 
Like he looks like the way that Pete Dunne used to be, the guy that like yeah, tagging so with Matt I Riddle, just, the this guy is that again, won, you know, the Dusty Cup, all of those things. So like you said, this is just great. Triple I enjoyed H. the match, and again, he gets the win. So like, what we're gonna see? Maybe Imperium keep going at this with these guys, and it's a good story. I mean, the matches that they're producing are great, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, and Triple H is just presenting again a hot match to start the show. The crowd is into it, and you know this is. The Intercontinental Championship, you know, it still keeps it relevant because Walter is still the champ and everything. Great feud. All six guys, I think, are, you know, getting over. Even yes. though somebody has to get pinned in every single match, you know, I think all six guys are getting over. So, you know, great way to so start this the show. This was a good start, you know, and number one for us. You know, both of us said, you know, Sheamus and his group, they were going to win. There you go. Number one on that. Ronda Rousey and Lynn Morgan. You said 10 minutes for this match tops. You said the one way, like Ronda Rousey, in order for her to stay in WWE, she needs to become SmackDown Women's Champion. Also, we mentioned Liv Morgan, great. A lot of people love her, and, you know, and we're going to say the why, because we saw a lot of that tonight. But, you know, like we said, Liv is not ready, you know, to be the Ronda Rousey. Out of all the women in the roster, she is not. But, you know, here, what did you think of the whole match? Because I feel, ah, they did whatever they could. It was possible there. As a whole, I mean, some pe a lot of people I saw online complaining about the finish. They just thought it was sloppy. They, you know, badly done and not, and maybe not even the right decision, you know. But for me, Ronda needed to win. So I'm glad she did. You know, the match early on, Ronda was, you know, just trying to fight. Then Liv Morgan was using the bat. Ronda would throw the bat away. You see this with the fire extinguisher. Then Ronda would use the bat. Liv kind of slammed Ronda into the steel steps, you know, took them both out. And eventually they get in the ring and, you know, to Lots go of pretty much from like Liv, if you allow me. To yeah, I mean, yeah, legit. And yeah, I mean, you know, all jokes aside with that, I mean, Liv is definitely, you know, a good looking woman, but. The one thing is a lot of people liked her because she's at underdog lovable. She doesn't have a hateable quality as yes. a human being. Maybe as a wrestler, you know, if I'm you're looking at it like I do, she's not a very good promo. So, but you know, just as a person, there's nothing to hate about her. So you want to cheer for her. But you know, she kind of she hits like a almost like the knees, the code breaker, the code red. She calls it almost the code red. They call it yes. Yeah, but is she had the the chair there instead so hits Ronda in the face with the chair and you know just eventually they gets this like awkward submission Ronda has her and then she you know she fights for it and gets this lock here and you see they're like oh why is Liv smiling see that's where something or commentary should, unless that's an going to be part of an angle just don't sell it I mean Liv was probably in her head she probably thought man this match was good and I feel good and she had a smile on her face but just don't sell it be like oh she's just She's unconscious, and that's just her face. Yeah, let's see it again. Yeah, they're like, yeah, but the, yeah, but the whole time they're like, why is she smiling? She just lost the title. It's like, well, or don't I guess sell you know, it and make her look like, like an idiot. Ronda's booty is, I guess, a nice cushion. Because to me, to me, to me, that just makes one commentary. That's just it buries your baby face who just lost the belt. But Ronda's the new champ. That's what they need it to be. And you know, like I said, you know, predictions aside, you know, we're correct so far, but I think this was the correct choice as well, just from a whole booking perspective, because Ronda's still a superstar, even though it's been how many years since she's been a UFC fighter and, you know, all that stuff. She's still a worldwide household name. People still know who she is. So she needs to be the champ. And out of everybody, you know, you will like you will, like we mentioned, just Liv Morgan does not have the caliber. Not yet. Maybe she can have it like even years from now. You know, but like, not, like to be a Charlotte, like maybe like a Sasha, even like a Bailey, or even like a Becky Lynch to like go toe to toe with Ronda. But what they will that they were able to do, it was enough. Like you said, maybe the submission, like something like sloppy. Hey, maybe Liv Morgan can join Judgment Day now. Maybe she can just start with like with the return that we're going to talk about later in the show. Something like that for Liv. Maybe a different uh, a switch of direction for her. We'll see. We don't know yet, but at least Ronda Rousey, two out of two, mm, we're good. I, I just. To, to comment yeah, on let's that. Let's go back. Oh, oh. Well, just, I'm, just a quick. I don't. She can still be babyface, and because that's what they love her to change her heel. I think the crowd. They, why would you boo her? She's hot, and again, you know, she has no Maybe qualities. Like why you would want to boo her? So you know, I would say keep her, like, hey, keep know, her a babyface, and guys, let her just. You no. Know, Criticize me when I'm champion. Now, okay, maybe I don't know. I'm just saying maybe that could be a change, or like you said, maybe now. And she also, you got who are your champions? You know, if she's gonna, you know, your champion is a heel, so you want baby faces. But anyway, moving on. 
Yeah, exactly. Both. You're right. And let's go to this one. I thought this was going to be the main event, but like they actually switch it up on me, which is fine. I'm not nothing to hate on that. The strap match, Karen Cross and Drew McIntyre. Again, three out of three. Here, I will say the match, not what I expected. Maybe I would want more brutality, more violence in uh, out of this match. But what did you think of it? Because in the end, you know, we said one of these guys are going to be sacrificed. Yeah, in the beginning, it was a little was bit... Ready. It, was, it was a little bit bullshit in the beginning. He wouldn't put the strap, you know, wouldn't put it all around his wrist. And he just kept throwing it at Drew. And then they attacked him. And then they kept brawling for a little bit till the match finally started when Drew beat him up and put the, the strap on his wrist. Um, at first I thought Karrion was going to put it around his neck and I thought and then maybe Drew would do the same thing and I thought ooh man that's going to be kind of like intense having it around their necks instead of their wrists I thought they're going to go like you know like real crazy but no I mean it, it was a hard fought match it was pretty brutal but wasn't very long and, and that was no. and, and that was kind of I'm going to talk about another match too you know uh, pretty much the Bailey Bianca match you know a match that got cut short i don't want to say he cut short on time because i thought the pay-per-view was long enough it didn't need to be any longer or anything so you know six it was matches good. pretty much but um this was this was what it needed to be because i mean was this really going to be a big blow off maybe this isn't just to promote the next person to roman maybe yeah. we maybe we already had the next person to roman at the end of the pay-per-view i don't know you know who knows what triple h is going to do that's the magic of his, you know, WWE right now. We're all excited to see where this is going. So this feud might continue. This might go till, you know, Survivor Series or something. Yeah. Who knows? But, you know, Scarlett, she, you know, Drew sits up for the Claymore kick. He's going to take out Carrion, you think. And uh, Scarlett gets in the way. Boom, hits him with some, uh, they said like, like, see, like, yeah, like a pepper something spray. Like that, like a yeah, and uh, I, I like how they, you know, she threw the can out of the ring and Corey Graves grabbed it and he read it and he's like, oh, this is, you know, police grade pepper spray, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, again, commentary now they're doing the opposite when they buried Liv. Now here they're putting it over by saying, oh, that's why Drew sold it so bad. And that's why yes. Karrion was able to, you know, hit the big punch and pin him because this is like police grade pepper spray so you know, you know and he, it was cool also because now Karen also has the straight jacket because they were saying the straight jacket and now like he said the carry on hammer i think like you know like the big yeah. punch to the back of the neck and like that was and, cool. and, the, and the referee they you know they give him the towel and some water so like drew selling it you know with the eyes and everything and hey Karen, he just came back here first pay-per-view you know big win here for him and the feud's probably going to continue you know it is drew's not going to take this lion down so this was good and because it wasn't a, a blow off, it wasn't a culmination, it wasn't anything like that. I was fine with it kind of being here in the middle of the card. Yeah, no, yeah, and especially like we said, three out of three here. Carry on cross either, like you said, maybe goes to Roman, or I don't know, like maybe like the feud continues. But it's good to see that like Scarlett is playing the main factor also. Like, hey, I have my woman that like will do whatever it takes for me not to lose. Because I might I might be in the losing stick. No, no, I was about to lose, but hey, she is the one that like makes me win. So that was again exciting and good you know like so far these three matches brady really like for me good and no i like i wanted to keep watching something that i haven't had in like forever in wwe outside of like paul and we do the our videos and everything there you go let's like, roll women's championship match the ladder match out of all of them this is probably the one that i was like we had high hopes for me just a little bit um not as good as i thought it was gonna be just because of like the ending but like you said they, they botched it but again in a ladder match situations with like this type of like props is different things can change and what did you think of this because again in this one we were actually wrong we both thought bailey but in the end bianca Belair and yeah and, and i i did kind of say hey with that image of bailey and damage control all holding you the belts i said you know sometimes that's the rule and i maybe i jinxed it for my girl bailey if i did sorry but uh, <laughs> you, you, you did know, yeah <laughs> no i was like you know sometimes they do that whoever stands tall on the go home show is probably going to lose at the pay-per-view and that was the case here. I mean, this match wasn't bad. It wasn't their first, you know, match. And, you know, I, I would I, I wouldn't say that it was their best match. There was a couple, you know, spots that stick out where, you know, one where uh, kind of later in the match where Bianca's laying down and Bailey goes to put the ladder on her and she can't get it right. And Bianca just has to lay there like forever. Like, so, yes. and so I mean, it's just if you can't do it, move on and you know that's the problem with these gimmicky matches is sometimes when the spots go too crazy or you get exhausted and things go too long but i mean the match really didn't go too long i really didn't think but 
you know, so, some brutal spots. You know, Bailey did a big Macho Man elbow uh, she, onto Bianca. She was draped across a ladder to the outside. You know, Bailey took a good bump on that. And, you know, there was some good stuff for Bailey was on the outside. You thought Bianca was going to win. Then damage control comes out. And then th- another awkward spot where she has Dakota Kai up, no problem for the KOD. For the KOD. And uh, Io was going to do a moonsault. And then Io was kind of just supposed to, like, fall on top of Dakota Kai so she could do like a double KOD but instead of them both laying perpendicular they were almost laying like an X instead of laying like this <laughs> yeah. they were laying like this and then Bianca's like how the fuck can I do this move I'm gonna kill one of you so that she like it, it took and don't so you think also that's overdoing it you like I would if it was done in quick succession boom caught her EO oh my god fell into it in like in four or five seconds boom real quick you could think, oh, Io slipped, fell into it. Bianca just boom, quick, like John Cena doing the double AA. Yeah, me, okay. That's what they want to recreate, pretty much. But, that's what they want to do. But when it takes so long, the crowd is just like, when you can check your Facebook and you can, mm-hmm. you know, scratch your ass and take a drink and they're still setting up the move, it's like, come on. So, yeah. I mean, no offense. I love both these women. They're both fantastic wrestlers. I want to keep seeing them, keep seeing them in the main event of the women's division. Bianca gets the win here through it all. One thing that I want to mention, and I know you're pretty good with details because you're the guy that like mentions all the details in these matches. When she hit the KOD on Bailey, I think the jaw was compromised. She might have had an injury because you can see like how like the face went flat on like the ladder. And you know, this picture says to me that like she might have some problems right there. I'm not assuring anything, but like, you know, when she hit the KOD on that ladder, that was like a brutal spot. Yeah. I mean, the one good thing where a a broken jaw, if, if, you know, worst case scenario, broken jaw. You, you can still kind of wrestle and be on TV and this and that with a broken jaw. So it's not anything like a broken leg or, you know, a, a torn muscle or anything like that. But hopefully Bailey's okay. Hey, Bianca wins here. They're really pushing her. To me, she's one of those, you know, that came out of NXT and is just, you know, booked legit. She yeah. hasn't been like, Oh, here's Finn Balor, or here's Bobby Roode, or you know somebody that kind of. Oh, here's a, yeah, a, a little you bit know of that a push. How Bobby Roode, I still bullshit. hurts every single day. But I know. mean, Bianca came out of NXT, and you know, she, you know, she, like a house on fire, and they keep booking her legit. And, and you know, uh, we Charlotte Flair. Who's going to be the one? Yeah, Charlotte who's Flair. Who's coming back? You know, it's going to be Charlotte. So that's going to be right there the feud. So at least we know. Uh, like you said, damage control. Maybe Bailey goes to SmackDown. You know, now there's no brand exclusivity here. So like they can just move back and forth. Good match. Hopefully Bailey doesn't have any injuries. So you know that is something to like keep in mind of. But again, solid, solid, solid every single time. Next one, Paul. I quit match. This we said. You know, Edge is gonna give his all. Even Booker T said, "Oh, this might be Edge's last match in WWE." But we knew that like the guy that is gonna be with the upper hand is gonna come out strong. Here is Finn Balor. And I like the match, but you called the whole thing. So like, I don't know if you're like... A uh, yeah, the, I mean, the one thing I didn't like was the, what was the weird gimp, you know, leather mask that Finn Balor was wearing. You know out. what that is, Paul? It's like, and I have the picture, it's Hellraiser. Is that movie, you know, like that? Oh, uh, well, I mean... It, that, you know, I, like that it, it, um, it Halloween didn't, movie. That, yeah, you know, yeah. Early. It's it, very similar to that. It's Hellraiser. Ki- so I'm assuming kinda, that, that he was trying to emulate. And, yeah, I uh, mean, I guess I can see it, but eh, I mean, it, 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 it was kind of... It looks kinda, shitty. I mean, you know, you can even see that, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, the match itself, it was good. We, we knew it was going to be, you know, they were fighting all over the place, you know, kept that, you know, get that mic out of my face. You know, I know I'm not going to quit. Go to hell. Then, I don't yeah, quit. I, I mean, the match was good. and But you knew what was going to happen. You knew everybody was going to come down. You knew all, you know, all the jokers and everything. You know, then you hear Ray's music and then you go, okay, where's Dominic? Then Dominic comes out. Oh my God, he's putting the boots to his own father. This can't be. Then you see Ray at Ripley and boom, there's the Glamazon like a badass. And as soon as she came down, I, I, it, it was the finish because what other, how else could you get a man like Edge to quit? You couldn't. There's no way. There's no way you, you could it, get Edge You called to the quit. whole thing. You said. You know, what is a man, you know, the, the man, you know, the, he should always protect his wife. That should be the first thing. So that's what he did. You know, they had him and, you know, Ray put the chair under her head and he's like, no, please, you know, oh my God. And then she's going to do it. He's like, no, I quit. 
because she was going to do the concerto. Did he say that or did he say subscribe to Rope Break? I think I heard that, but... Oh, no, well, that was the say. He's like, I quit. And they're like, what? He's like, and subscribe to Rope Break. They're like, okay, oh, okay, good, okay, good. okay, okay, okay. Good, so... Yeah, so they didn't do it. But no, I mean, this was good. And in the end, she did it anyway. She did concerto on Bad Phoenix. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, what are you going to see now? Edge is going to be taking these guys out. You, we got to think, you know, there's going to be something where... You know, Survivor Series, there's going to be, you know, the big who, the bloodline versus who. Yeah. Maybe there'll be two kind of Survivor Series. Maybe it'll be Judgment Day and Team. Maybe it'll be AJ Styles and it'll Ray be Mysterio. Edge and Edge. Rey Mysterio and somebody else. And then, you know, they'll be going against them, you know. No, yeah, no. Like you but, said, I mean, this is good. something where they're building it pretty good. And this is right like the Brawling Brutes. Imperium was already over, at least with us. Maybe not with the general audience, but with us, they were already over. But this is getting a group like Judgment Day over, or at least it's trying to. It might not, everybody watching might not go, oh, they're the coolest group ever. They're, you know, they're the Ministry of Darkness or something like that. No, you might not think that. But Triple H is at least trying to get you to hate these guys. Yeah. He's trying and to you know, get you, and you know, to want to see you get their ass kicked. You needed a big, big win, and Finn Balor had to win, you know? And yeah. I, like I said, and for example, I like that also, like, for example, in this instance is when, like, remember, like, even Edge is like, oh, where, where's the paramedics? Bring the doctor, bring somebody. The referee is Edge plays the same a thing. Edge Ray is, is like, Ed, everybody's Ed is selling the thing. Everybody's yeah. making you believe that the Feds of Phoenix is probably out, you know, for, like, a few days or something. So it was cool. It's like, yeah, she could cuss. She could, you know, her skull could be fractured, anything, you know, oh, my God, you know. No, they're edge, giving edge you the whole a, idea. A, yeah, I mean, now this is Edge great. is, you know, suffering from this thing, and you know, the Judgment Day, like you said, like all jumping him, and all of that. This is good. I'm, I'm happy with like at least Triple H that you said. You can see at least the effort, and that is what you applaud. You know, the effort of selling you these stories as much as you can, because again, and he now, has to clean up everything that Vince did. While Rhea Ripley might not be, you know, have the title reigns and the championship matches and everything like Bianca Belair does. Man, look at what she did. She just caved in the skull of one of the most beloved women in all of WWE history. So, all WWE Hall of Famer. So, so I mean, you know, she, she, she's, she's getting heat too. And, you know, one of those things now, it's interesting to see. Is it going to be, uh, you're going to book a WrestleMania or some big match? Maybe at the Royal Rumble, you know, something wherever. Beth Phoenix versus Ray Rhea Ripley. Ripley. Or, you know, who's going to get the revenge for Beth Phoenix? Because I don't think we're going to see Edge beat up Rhea Ripley. No, uh, no, that, no. Know, like we're not going to see Maybe that, somebody but... else. Like, so maybe, I don't know, but Natalia, I mean, or maybe somebody will come up. But that's also... the one thing with Triple H is everything with his booking so far at these big shows, it makes me go, I want to see what he's going to do next. Yes, exactly. Like, he leaves you with a hook. Like, like again, I, that's what I mentioned at the beginning. It's like good taste in your mouth. Oh, I'm finally, like, enjoying wrestling one more time. I feel like, you know, the kid that I used to, like, enjoy the pay-per-views, not understanding it or believing that, you know, everything was happening. Oh, it was, oh, it's great, you know. Now it's at least, hey, everything makes sense. At least you want to keep watching the show. And you have in this Judgment Day a whole big story also, father and son. Ray going against Dominic. So you have a whole storylines in a big picture. You have many storylines going uh, right there, growing also at the same time. So that's also fantastic. So the main event, like you said, the fight pit. This one was great. I think that Seth Rollins, I don't know your perception about this. Mine, oh, I will tell hold you on. that. Let me, let me hit pause. Let me hit pause. Rick, scratch the record. Rewind one second. Just want to quick mention The Miz. And, you uh, want The Miz. Okay, let's go with all The Miz. That, I just, just to mention that for, because I love when he was shitting on Gritty. But the mascot was there and he's like, ah, dad, he's like, you're fucking bullshit. And then Gritty gives him the shirt. Oh, you want me to put that shirt on over my $10,000 suit? And you, you thought Gritty was going to be, De or Dexter Loomis was going to be Gritty. It wasn't. And I mean, I just, I just want to, I pop every time I see Gritty. So that's it. Okay. Main event. Main event. Main event. Worth mentioning, it was in Philadelphia, the Flyers, you know, PA, all of that good stuff. See, Paul, you know, I have it everything for everybody. I tried to accommodate. So there you go. You wanted it, Paul, you get it. The fight pit, I was going to mention uh, before I started, like, he, I, I just feel Rollins felt uncomfortable with this. I don't know, maybe my, again, the way I saw it, but you tell me. But also, like, Rollins uh, came out wanting to, like, uh, be, uh, emulate Ron Van Dam. That was pretty legit. I'll say that, I guess, for Philly, ECW, and all of that. Yeah, and, so, and it'll probably also have to poke fun at Matt Riddle, the whole stoner thing as well, I would assume. Yeah, exactly. Like, to make fun and, of and like you said, ECW. I mean, I think he, anything that I saw... Rollins look uncomfortable was him just selling to try to get the fight pit over to try to get yeah. the structure over. I don't think he was uncomfortable like in real like 
oh my god i'm scared of heights like like for a shoot i'm really scared and i i, I don't want to do this no i think it was all no and like, that's my I point like you know like it didn't feel comfortable like you know like in the structure like you know kind of like delivering the match that's at least my my thing i don't again i could be wrong but like because i didn't see rollins with the same like movement the same speed the same pace i was like ah eh, i don't know but again it's just my perception but you tell me no like i said i think they were having their match i think it, it, it was just you know trying to sell the structure because you know that that's what it was and you know it was they were using it to their advantage throwing each other into it you know really hard stuff daniel cormier was getting involved too and you know maybe he should get involved in a gym program he's looking a little rotund for especially a guy who they're trying rotunda, to get over yeah for a, a guy who they're trying to get over as oh he could beat up seth rollins and 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 you know blah, blah. i'm like look, and also paul we, we saw like pedigrees we saw like um, several rkos several stumps you know like yeah i mean it, it was good you know he hit the stomp like you said and it, but if it, they, they climb up to the top and you know they're up there and you think oh my god is he gonna throw him off and rollins goes up for a power bomb and commentary is freaking out but he throws him in the corner and i said oh my god we thought he was gonna throw him off the top he had shades of mick foley we were you know we were scared for for riddle's life here and they're fighting like you said an rko up top and rollins kind of rolls down and you know because he hit the stomp up top and he, rollins count count and he's like no i will only make the count if it's in the ring not if it's up top and rollins is like damn I thought Rollins was going to do something like roll him down and then, you know, they were going to do some kind of move, something crazy. I thought it was going to be Rollins doing it, but instead it was Riddle after that RKO when Rollins fell down. He did like a broton. He landed hard on his ass. You could tell he was hurt from that when he, he you know, Riddle was. You can he, tell the ass was really hurt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Rollins was probably. Our, you could even tell with Cormier like bent down. And you could read Rollins' lips. He goes, I'm all right. Like, you know, I'm yes. fine. That's not like, yeah, it, you like, know, he yeah. was good. I, I'm legit. Keep but, going. And like you said, submission call and Rollins just stopped tapping out. Yeah, he tapped out, and you know we called it. Riddle needed to get the win here. Or Paul, or it looks like Dilo Brown there. Yeah, exactly. You know, I got you got to do the neck thing here. But I mean, mm -hmm. you know, this is good, and uh, Riddle needed the win. Hey, nobody knows what Randy Orton's future is. He could be done in wrestling because they say that like injury. the bag is still injured, so that's why. He yeah, so, so we don't really know. Um, so hey, this is a good feel good win here. The babyface guy goes over. And, you know, he, he barely has time to celebrate. You don't even know what's going to happen. Boom. Lights uh, go out. Commentary sells it. What the heck? Are we still on here? The crowd loses that it. That line Fire. is fantastic. Don't you think? That line is so great. You haven't heard that line in forever. Like, you know, are we still on his main ago? Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Is this like, still alive? Oh, great speaking of good lines, before we, before, we, before we tackle the main event, one thing I want to mention. Did you hear in the strap match? We were talking about great strap matches in history. They said, oh... You know, one of the greatest was Vader versus Sting. Okay, you mentioned Vader. He's in your Hall of Fame, whatever. Even though he didn't do really anything in WWF. Yes. You know, he's still in your Hall of Fame. But Sting? Sting's on AEW almost weekly. You know, and he wrestles in pay-per-views, big matches. He's used prominently. So the fact that they mentioned him shows that they're not scared to they're acknowledge wrestling. History. They're yeah, acknowledging history. the history. Remember, so, like, so long to ago, me, like, to me, that's ago, legit Paul. because Vince McMahon would have never did that. But Triple H, he's not petty. He goes, you know what? We'll at least acknowledge the legitness. Remember, of Remember, um, three weeks ago, Kevin Owens did the Scorpion dead drop, dead deadlock, and they said it, the Scorpion deadlock. They didn't say yeah. sharpshooter or anything like that. So one more time, they are acknowledging the history. Like you said, great point on that. Also. He's got the world, whole world in his shoulders. You see the pig, you see oh, the rabbit. The whole world in his hands. Oh, my that, God. That's, 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 uh, that's, yeah. so, I don't know. Oh, the oh, God, there you go. You see the thing? And then but, here, Michael calling Corey. Oh, my God. What's yeah, going this, going it on? was good. It, it went, you know, you saw the pig. You saw the buzzard. You saw the rabbit. You rabbit. saw Abby the witch. You saw them all. Then you saw the fiend. And people popped real big. Oh, my God. Then it went, you know. Then you saw this door and it was glowing. What the heck's going on? Then it took you to the fun house and you saw everything. It was, you know, what's going on? You saw the TV. You saw this weird mask. It was speaking. You heard the song and, once. And, and, and you couldn't really, you know, yeah, you, you heard the, the theme song that a Firefly fun house. And then the TV was talking, but it was all jumbled. You couldn't really hear it. But you saw this mask and you're what's going on. Then the door opened. The crowd was losing it, and I thought, oh, the lights are going to go off here. We're not going to see who it is. You're going to have to tune into Raw. 
you know, whatever to find out who it is. But no, Triple H didn't tease us. He didn't blue ball us. You know, he, he let us, he blew the whole load, baby. He gave it to us right here. You know, there That's he right. is, Bray Wyatt. You know, you saw the mask. He takes off the mask. The crowd loses it. And, and it was one of those things where, he, you know, he didn't debut where you see a debut on AEW or any place else. And the people pop and it's like, oh, okay. But, you know, they knew it was com- what No, this this was legit. It wasn't a CM Punk pop. You know, it wasn't that return. But this was this was awesome. The people loved it. And it's been nothing but great stuff I've been seeing on the internet so far. People saying, oh, my God, Bray Wyatt's back. Triple H is making wrestling legit again. This is awesome. You know, this feels so legit. People saying, I, I can't wait for the new T-shirts. I can't wait for the new action figure. People are going crazy already. And he's the only it's not thing even, like I, it's and, not and, even and, been you know. two hours. It's not even been two hours and yeah. people are going crazy for him. And this is great. People are going to want to see what's going on here. To me, I know you said, oh, maybe a Liv Morgan or Alexa Bliss. Don't. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Too much ingredients in the soup. Whatever analogy you want to use. Just let Bray be Bray. Just let him just do his. I don't know if he needs both characters. Yeah. Because remember, the, he's, the, he wasn't Bray anymore or like the Fiend now. He's both. And the, the cool thing is like he went back to the old Bray Wyatt. Remember he and the, he finished the oh, we're like blowing the thing. That was cool. Yeah, yeah the lantern. Just yeah, like, you know, me, the, I, like, the, the Fiend, <laughs> the, the Fiend was cool. And it, 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 you know, it served its purpose. But just have him be Bray Wyatt, you know, the dude with the dreadlocks and, you know, or the whatever. Yeah, dreadlocks. And, you know, he wears he, maybe he wears the mask as an entrance. And when he gets to the ring, he takes it off and it's Bray Wyatt. It's his. But you don't need to go super crazy, super creepy, you know, at least for the, that. Like he doesn't need to be wearing the fiend mask and no sell everything and this and that. Kind of do like a mix of old Bray Wyatt. You know, yeah. you can you can you can do a little bit of the fiend. A but, little bit of promo know, work was very, you know, was but but, cool. but the old Bray Wyatt was, you know, like the feud with John Cena. Everybody talks about, you know, the WrestleMania 30 match and everything. I mean, that's the Bray Wyatt. I think that was most over, and you know, that's what I think people, you know, they want to see too. Yeah. So you know, that was really great, and like I said, Triple H doesn't leave us like blue ball, so that was really cool. I mean, and just to see the Fiend coming back, or like, I mean, they all knew also, like Paul, the one thing, big hint that they they. I said that like he was gonna come back is like on Spotify they put his theme songs again. So that was like the thing like so he's coming back, you know. So like they already there were so many hints that he was coming back and at least we knew about Oh yeah, and as soon as this I'm 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 sure they didn't acknowledge. You know, like they barely said anything. So like, oh my god, what's going on? And then like AW like, oh wonder who this is. Like, oh it's it's so and so and he's like so (laughs) you know, like they killed it for you, but at least here there was like an acknowledgement but not a direct one. Really I mean, cool they, they sold it. They sold it like this guy invaded the freaking the building and just took over the show. Yes, so the, the different know. approach. So that was cool. because you got to think so, about I mean, it. They they weren't like, oh, here's the Firefly Funhouse segment, or here's Alexa Bliss in the ring. It was commercials during the commercial break, or it was a little QR code on the microphone that you know somebody would be cutting a promo and oh, there's a QR code. Let me scan it. That's the only way that led us here. So, yes. you know, it's almost like you said, like this guy just showed up in WWE and took over. Yeah, so, and it's good. And I, again, they I, have I really a like how they're creative. They're he's a guy this. that like is also like he was in a part of the Marvel movies. So that's why like he does. He knows how to like create expectation, how to create like all of those things and is working for now. It's great. Hey, Bray Wyatt is back. Uh, great version of Extreme Rules. Probably the best Extreme Rules in the last, what, 10 years that we've seen it. So not, no need for blood to tell good storylines right here. I will say that. Paul, you know, your closing thoughts before we go over Yeah, here? I mean, like like we said, maybe besides a couple matches, you know, besides maybe picking on people with sp- certain spots and this and that. I mean, overall, man, I, I would have to look back. I can't say for certain if it's the best in the last 10 years, but without looking at the cards and the matchups and everything. It, I mean, there was a, a lot of good people in the roster in the past 10 years, but... You know, in at least as a whole and as a feeling, the crowd, the energy, you know, this has been, you know, one of the best pay-per-views for Extreme Worlds that they put on in a while. And, you know, the, the people are into it and you got to give, you know, take your hat off and applaud Triple H for a lot of that. 
Exactly. So family, thank you so very much. We got to applaud all of you for like all the love, support, yes, every single you. thing that you do for this channel. Keep doing so. Don't forget, share the video, comment, let us know what you guys feel about the return of The Fiend, all the results and all of that. Thank you for like everything that you've done throughout this week and where they can find us. That's Rope Break on Facebook, the OG Rope Break on Twitter, original Rope Break on Instagram, Twitch and TikTok. And of course, right here on YouTube, the home of the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the original Rope Break. You and me have one more thing that is left to say, and that is... Uh, uh, the, uh,